Do you want fast biological reactions? Well, yes you do. To keep alive. And it's enzymes that get things done. They make chemical reactions happen, but they don't get used up. Enzymes help large molecules join together or come apart in just the right way. So how does the trick work? Enzymes are proteins, large molecules formed from long chains of amino acids. They are folded into complex three-dimensional shapes. Smaller molecules can fit into the shapes of the enzyme, like a 3D jigsaw, but less boring. That's how the enzyme does its job. The enzyme positions the smaller molecules, called substrate molecules, so they can be joined in the right places. Go on, substrates, get in there! And get out again. The product molecule has to separate off from the enzyme. The enzyme is free to carry on joining more and more substrate molecules. They can only do one job, and they do it over and over again. No imagination. Some enzymes do the opposite job. They split large molecules into smaller parts. In a very specific way, of course. Only molecules with the right shape fit. It's called the lock and key model. Just like only the right shaped key fits into a lock. Here's a technical term. The place on the enzyme where the substrate molecules fit is called the active site. The shape of the enzyme is critical. Change its shape and the substrate molecules won't fit the active site. The enzyme stops working. If this happens, we say the enzyme has been denatured. How does it happen? Enzymes can be denatured by high temperatures or extremes of pH. Whichever it is, don't say the enzyme has been killed. Enzymes are proteins. They're just large molecules and not living things. Here is a graph. Higher temperatures increase the frequency and energy of collisions between the enzyme and other molecules. So the rate of reaction increases as temperature increases, up until about body temperature. That's ideal for most enzymes. Your body has loads of jobs that it needs enzymes to do. So far, so good. But if the temperature continues to rise, then the enzyme starts to get denatured. So it doesn't work as well, and the rate of activity falls. You can see that an enzyme works best at a specific constant temperature, body temperature. The wrong pH can also denature an enzyme. So here's another graph. For this enzyme, activity peaks at pH 8 and then falls away either side of this. Different enzymes work best at different pH values. For example, the stomach is very acidic, so enzymes there work best at pH 2 to suit the environment. You can probably imagine what their graphs look like, but we're going to draw it anyway. Enzymes take part in many different cell processes, like photosynthesis in plants and joining amino acids together to make proteins. They're also involved in aerobic respiration. Now let's get this straight. Respiration is not the same as breathing. Respiration is the chemical reaction that releases energy from glucose. There are enzymes that catalyse this reaction. Most of the work takes place inside cells, in the cytoplasm, in tiny objects called mitochondria. The energy is used for contracting muscles, joining molecules to form proteins and lots of other things, including maintaining body temperature in birds and mammals. Microorganisms produce enzymes and some release them out into the surroundings. We can collect these and make them into useful chemicals for the home and industry. Oh, thanks. Take a look in the cupboard. Why are all those detergents called biological? Because they contain enzymes that digest proteins and fats to make water-soluble products. This helps to get the stains out. So there you are. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Without them, you'd have no super clean clothes. Oh, and you'd die, because chemical reactions in your body wouldn't happen.